In this video I'm going to replace the hard drive in my iMac. I'm going to use a third party hard drive and my iMac is a mid-range 2010 27 inch. These are the tools that I used. There was a T10 screwdriver and a T8 screwdriver. I used two suction cups, these are little little suction cups and I used a microfiber cloth to clean the screen. I also used some tweezers and I used a little nylon board to try and uh, to, to help me pry out the screen. I also needed this extra part which is a temperature sensor. It's I need it because I used a third party hard drive. So if I didn't use it, the fans would just keep on spinning. Before I got started, I unplugged everything from my iMac um, and just left it to stand for a while. So if there was any charge inside of the computer, it had an opportunity to discharge. I left it for uh, about half an hour, 40 minutes, which is plenty of time. Uh, before I actually start work on any computer, I discharge myself by uh, um, touching something that's going to earth me and making sure that um, I have no static electricity on me. Electricity is our friend, but it is very, very dangerous, and we have to give it a great deal of respect. So I always respect electricity. I never take any chances where electricity is concerned. I know that the screen, once you get past the glass and you actually get to the screen itself, I know that if I touch it, it's going to be really difficult to remove those oils from the screen. I've put the suction cups onto the screen in the top corners. And then to get it off, I just pull gently but firmly. And this has to be done very carefully because I didn't want to break the glass. Once I pulled it away, it just lifts up out and then put it somewhere, somewhere safe nearby. These are the locations of the eight screws that I removed. There was four on the left and four on the right. Um, I didn't need to remove any at the top near the eye camera and I didn't need to remove any at the bottom near the Apple logo. I used the T10 screwdriver to remove the screws. The one at the top here was a bit tricky and I needed the tweezers to be able to pull out the screw and it was the same for the others because of the magnets. I then popped them into this little pot so I didn't lose them. The screws are right down in between the screen and the casing. I'm now going to remove the screws on the other side of the screen. Once all the screws are out, I then use the nylon stick to gently pry forward the screen and then disconnect the uh, cables one at a time.
I then removed the cable, uh, the connector at the top left hand corner. It just slides out. There was another cable at the bottom left corner that had a little catch on that I just needed to um, squeeze and then it just slided out. There were a few more cables to remove but I couldn't get the camera in to show you. There was one near the hard drive that was just a, a, a little two pin thing that you just slide out and then there was the um, screen connector which um, I just had to squeeze the, the clips on the side and then pull it out. The, uh, the, the temperature sensor one was the one with the two pins and I located that by finding the temperature sensor that was coming out of the port on the hard drive and then just followed it round to its position on the board. I then removed the hard drive using the T10 screwdriver. I used the T8 screwdriver to remove these two screws and removed this grey piece of metal which holds the hard disk in and transferred it to the new hard drive. I had a bit of trouble getting this one out and I had to use a pair of pliers to just loosen it just a little bit so I could continue to unscrew it with the, um, with the, with the T8 and then obviously I popped them in a little pot because I don't want to mix them up with the T10s. The next thing I did was remove these mounting points. They just unscrew with the T8 and then I put them into the new hard drive. From the original one, this 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 sort of foam bit here um, was on here and what I've done is I've just gently peeled that off and stuck it in roughly the same place on the new one. So this is where our hard drive's gonna go. Here's our hard drive, and we just uh, we just pop it back in there, making sure that these these wires are out the way. Okay, so they've gone in. We look to see that these are these are lined up, and then we screw that back in and pop this connector back on and this connector back on and this this connector is where you're going to put your your new your new part um, for the temperature sensor this is the temperature sensor modification one end plugs into the SAT cable and the other end I plugged into the hard drive the end with the circuit board has a bit of tape on it so I peeled the tape off and then stuck that near the spindle near the middle of the hard drive. This modification was necessary because I have a third party hard drive and um, the fans wouldn't work unless I used this modification. I put the new part in that has the temperature sensor on. I peeled the tape off the back and then I placed it onto the hard drive near the spindle, right there. The end with these pins goes into this little port here, just slide it in. I then rested the screen back in its place, holding it out so I could plug in the, the cables that I unplugged to, to release it. I needed a second screwdriver to align where the screws go and what I did was I put the, the middle one in first and then um, put the rest in so that they, they aligned. I've put the screen back in and I've managed to get all of the screws in, although I can say it wasn't easy. I had to use tweezers because the magnets kept pulling the screw away. Um, 
it it it, it was uh, it was not easy to work on. It this was quite frustrating. It was really fiddly, and um, the the more frustrating and fiddly it is. The, the, the more lightly I am to sweat and I was worried about dripping on the screen but I didn't I was fine and I've managed to get that bit done at this point I used the microfiber cloth to clean the screen and the inside of the glass before replacing it <laughs> I've cleaned the screen and the inside of the glass and now I've put it back onto the iMac you put it you slide it you put it into the bottom make sure it goes into the bottom correctly and then gently um, put it into place and the magnets will grip it and pull it in you might need to make sure that it's in correctly where the um, where, where the camera is now all I have to do is to plug my iMac back in making sure that it's connected to the internet via the Ethernet cable because as soon as I switch it on, obviously I have a blank hard drive in there. So I'm going to have to uh, connect to the internet. It will automatically recognize that it needs a net install or some kind of internet install. I will get a glowing ball. I then select that. And the next thing that will happen is it will give me options like utilities and I'll be able to take it from there. On the whole, I have to say that removing the glass was one of the biggest worries that I had, but it wasn't so bad. It was quite easy in the end to get the, the, uh, the glass from the front to come off with the suction cups. Um, I rested them uh, rested the glass onto uh, a nice soft place that had a pillow underneath it. Um, the getting out the the actual screen that was very fiddly. That was that was very fiddly indeed. Um, I, I found that the screws kept flying off towards the magnets, um, and then once I got the screws out, actually trying to lift the screen out was really quite difficult. Once I got to the um, cables, unconnecting the cables, some of them were easy and others were quite difficult. And uh, I even managed to cut myself trying to remove the cables. Um, but they were easy to put back in. Um, I think that obviously there's a bit of a knack to it. And because I don't do this all of the time, I haven't acquired that knack. On the whole, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So now all I have to do is to format my hard disk and to install, or actually what I'm going to do is restore my machine from uh, a time machine backup. The easiest part of this was taking out the hard drive and removing the little grey frame and putting the, the 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 mounted bits, swapping the mounted bits over to the over to the hard drive and then putting the hard drive back in. That, that was very easy. Even using the, the extra part that I got, that, that was very easy to plug in, that plugged in no problem. And once I did start up the machine and start to install things, I could tell that it was working straight away. There was no strange noises coming from it. Um, the, the fans would work in the right kind of place, in the right circumstances. So this, this extra part really does seem to be doing its job. While I had the computer apart, I noticed that the fans were quite dusty. There was quite a lot of dust around there. So I got a little vacuum cleaner and I very carefully uh, um, sucked away all of the the dust that had accumulated over years and I also used a, a little brush just to brush away some of the dust that, that was uh, getting close to the circuit board. I did this because dust, well I didn't want anything to catch fire or anything when I switched it back on or later on in its life so I just thought while I've got Got the thing apart I might as well give it a little bit of a clean so I cleaned out the fans 
and I cleaned the circuit board very gently with a uh, with a with a Hoover and a brush, and uh, it it, uh, it it took a little bit of time, but I I managed to do it in the end. It, it, it's a lot cleaner now. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and try out one of my other videos.